Hi guys and welcome back to a new season. We are finally back on the road. We are crossing borders and we are going to Poland. For the next 10 to 15 days, we're gonna be traveling from the north to the west, to the east, to the south, and everywhere in between. Well, not everywhere. We've been to Poland before and we cannot wait to go back. In this first episode, we are gonna explore Poznan and resolve the mystery of why we saw so many goats there. Not to mention, try all the Polish food. Hello, welcome back to a new video. We are in... Poznan, Poland. We are standing behind the Imperial Castle. So yesterday we drove from... Netherlands. All the way through Germany. We were gonna stop in Berlin, but at the moment because of the old uh, COVID, we're not allowed to uh, stop in Berlin uh, or in Germany at all. So we drove all the way through it took us basically 12 hours to get here. Yeah. We crossed yes. the border. And that went fine because that was all a bit iffy and yeah, you know yeah, whether yeah. we were going to get in. We crossed the we crossed the bridge that, that actually uh, separates like Poland and Germany. There was a massive toll. That was eight euros, I think. Eight euros. Anyway, we are in Poland for the next two, two and a half weeks. We're in Poznan and we've been doing a lot of research online. So this vlog is going to be full of things to do here. And obviously, the main thing that we need to get up, st straight on to breakfast <laughs> is the f obviously the food. Okay, we're just walking to the main fountain and we've come across this big war design of two goats. But the thing is, we parked the car this morning and we saw goats in the parking garage. And we've seen, the, I think in the main square, there's uh, two goats when the bell goes. I don't know what this goat thing is, so hopefully we're gonna find out on the free walking tour that we're about to do in about 45 minutes. So uh, we'll get back to you about the goats. We can't get away from the goats. The goats no. are everywhere. Do you want a really insider, knowledgeable Theodora's finest fact? Go for it. I grew up on a goat farm. I used to milk 500 goats after school every day. This is the this is a city for you, babe. <laughs> it's the goat city, that's me. <laughs> now honestly, I'm a farmer's daughter's guy, if in case you didn't know. Okay, behind us is the local Saturday market, and within two minutes, Theodora is already buying herself a hat. Yeah, but it's epic shopping here. I I need to dive in, babe. I need some time for myself to shop around because so far the boutiques are looking ah. good. It's very uh, old school kind of market, you've got lots of fruit and veg. And uh, <laughs> granny pants, Theodora's getting a daily uh, dose of granny pants. But um, it's time for the walking tour. A tour, we always try and find a tour when we go into a city like this because uh, you end up finding so many facts and you get to learn about a city. Yeah. And it's like usually about an hour and a half, two hour tour. So we're here at the fountain, the meeting point of the walking tour. But one thing we have noticed is that it's 1040 and basically no one is around and no food places are open. So you can have a proper lay in and make a, a bit of a late night the night before in Poland. This is Freedom Square and this is where Poland, because it was divided between different countries, became the great Poland as a whole. The uprising began right from the bazaar. This was like the uber luxurious um, hotel back in the day. I've got a nose for it guys, because I saw that boutique underneath. I thought that is where it's at. What can I say, got great taste. But yeah, here is where the uprising started and where Poland became Poland again. If you are walking around in Poznan and you're seeing sort of stripes of red small bricks, that would have been where the old city wall would have been. And that was demolished in 1794. But it's cool to know that you walk around, you're like, hey, there used to be the wall right here. Goes everywhere.
So this is the most beautiful Baroque, Baroque church in Poland. And after you've just seen the goats fight in City Hall, uh, at 12.15, here they have a concert. So we're gonna see if it's on. We're not sure with COVID if it is on, but um, we're gonna see anyway. We have gotten to the bottom of why there are so many goats in Poznan. They are actually the symbol of the city. And why that was, because this is the myth, but I believe it. Um, when there was bombings during the war, only the tower got destroyed of the city hall. When that got rebuilt and revealed, there was a big celebration. The cook of Poznan was supposed to make a feast for the whole town. He burned everything. He went outside, found the first thing that he could find, and it was two goats. He took them back to the city hall to prepare them. They ran off, they went up into the towers playing, and people were laughing, and they were like, we need to keep them. So they have named them Pura and Tura. And Pura means potato, and Tura means fighter, so the fighter and the potato. So, Pura, Tura, we're happy to have you. The cheeky little fellas, and the symbol of Poznan. We were walking around and we saw the croissant. Babe, do you remember the story? We've just learned about this. This is very important, guys, if you come to Poznan and we're going to show you why. So basically on the 11th of November, they celebrate Independence Day and that is all about St. Martin. And here you can see it's called Rodol Skwinmaski. As I said that correctly, you need a license and every year it gets checked to make sure the uh, croissant is being made properly. There's 81 layers to the croissant. Um, yeah, and if you don't come up to the minimum standards, that whole year you get taken off the license and you can't sell them. So uh, we've got to try this. And each croissant is around a thousand calories. So we are definitely going to share. But I feel like we got the real deal. No. Oh, all right. Oh, wow. Oh. I've got to try this right now. Mmm. That's good. It's got nuts on top. It's got raisins. Mmm. Right, babe, start counting. 81 layers. The question is, is it worth 500 calories? No. 500 calories is a lot for just this. All right, we just finished the tour. I've got to say, it was a cracking tour. Hour yeah, 45. Good. Yeah, we know all about pose now. So, you got any questions? <laughs> Ask Theodora. Because <laughs> I wasn't listening. No, I was. Anyway, we haven't eaten yet, so we are going now to get um, baragodzi. Dumplings. Dumplings, uh, Polish dumplings. And thanks for the door, we know exactly which ones to order now, don't we? Exactly, and I am starving. Okay, we're all alone, so we're very safe in this little restaurant. Yeah. If you can see it, on top of the clock, we've got the goats. What are they called? Remember my story? Yeah, fighter and potato. I don't, I don't know the. Nice one, uh, nice one. I don't know the uh, Polish names. Okay, this is all about the dumplings. Dumplings with meat, dumplings with cabbage and mushrooms, dumplings with white cheese and potato. And ding, that ding. is the traditional one. So that's what we're going to go for. Okay, dinner has been served. Or should I should say lunch has been served. These are the boiled dumplings. Yeah. You want to cut one open. What is the so like inside? So you've got oh. potato, right? Yeah. And white cottage, white cottage cheese. cheese. So down the hatch. Oh my god, they're really good. Mm. Okay, so first you get the real like dumpling texture, but then you get real mash, like mash flavour, like potato flavour. Mm. It's all yummy and salty. The portion of eight dumplings is 14 slotty. So apparently, Poznan has 100,000 university students and the street we're walking down now has got loads of bars and restaurants. So if you are up for a good time and oh a gosh. few bevies, then I think this is your Poznan place. Poznan is your place. There's so many places, isn't there? So behind us is the most beautiful Baroque church and where I'm standing is Rwanda Cafe and it's a bit of an iconic place. Everyone goes here, it's the place to be. Even our Polish friends were saying, go to Rwanda Cafe. The tour guide even recommended it. So naturally, we gotta go to Rwanda Cafe. Babe, 
Okay, good news. The other traditional Polish dish that we had to try from our tour guide, the baked potato with cottage cheese on the menu. I must say, Rwanda has got a cool menu that's like real fresh things, like for example, homemade lemonade. Graham's got a green juice. And obviously, the traditional dish is baked potatoes with cottage cheese, and I'm guessing chives. So, let's give that a taste. The thing is, it's so simple and pure, isn't it? It's just pure taste. Yeah. Obviously potato, lovely warm, and then fresh and cottage cheese. So this is the square where the goats would run up to City Hall, into the towers and play. And in the end, the mayor and, and the uh, civilians, they were more amused by the two goats than by the burning food. They didn't care about that. So that's how the goats became the symbol of Poznan. But while we're on the topic, the square right in the center of Poznan of the old city, it's so beautiful. Um, if it looks really pristine and new to you, that's right, because in the war, a lot of this was damaged, so they rebuilt it all in the same style. They've done it so beautifully, and it's got a real cozy vibe. Loads of restaurants, loads of places to eat and drink. We love it. Two words you need to learn when you come to Poland. First one is Dzień Dobre, <laughs> means hello. And obviously, thank you, Dzień Goya. Dzień Goya? Dzień Goya. Dzień Goya. And if you want to get a kiss from a woman, say, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Buzia. Buzia. Buzia, <laughs> We only know that because we always hear our friends going Buzia. 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 We're not even sure if we're saying it right. But... If, if you want to say I think, yes, you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it said, um, dobre, dobre. I thought that's like no. good, good, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so considering it's a Saturday, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, it's pretty quiet here, guys. So the effects of Corona uh, virus is obviously uh, seen in the tourism. There's mainly uh, Polish people walking around. So it's kind of cool that it's quiet, but kind of sad for the uh, tourism industry here. Okay, we've come just outside the city center, about 10, 15 minute walk to look for this one dish that our tour guide suggested. It's basically Real Poznan dish. It's duck with red cabbage and some sort of papao, some red sort of dumpling. dumpling. And we think this place has got it. So fingers crossed, walked all this way. Nine says this is the best. Four point seven stars. So all let's right. check it out. Check it out. Well, babe, what did you think of that? That was awesome, guys. We started talking inside, but then the music came on, so we. It could be copyright issues with the music, <sighs> so we uh, come outside. That was epic. That was a uh, slow cooked pulled beef. Yes. Uh, in, in like a like potato a, roti, Poznan potato roti. Yeah, with a little salads. That was. We, um, what did you even say? I even said that it had to be on the top meals I've ever had. I know that's a statement. That's but a statement. I can't personally say that, but it was awesome. It was amazing. And then we had the pulled duck. Pulled duck. Yeah. So that's the traditional. Um, meal that we were after that our tour guide was recommending yeah but so. they all do it in modern twist and they did it yeah. in, a, in a barn sorry with but red this cabbage place, Ooh, and also can on, i just say on. uh value for money type of thing we just paid 92 slotty which is 18 pa 18 18 euros something like that and that's what we love about poland you can just keep eating because uh <laughs> It's, it's, but that uh, was really good, yeah. highly recommended, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay, that's the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've got a bit of informative information and a few ideas if you ever come to Poznan. Anything else we want to say? Yes, we want to say a free and easy way to support the channel is to subscribe. That's, that's all you what have I to do. To say. End the thumbs up Ooh. or comment. That would really help us. It keeps us growing. Exactly. Guys, leave us a comment if you like the video, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. Mwah. Anything else to say, babe? If you want to... Sub oh. Anything else to say, babe? If you want to do us a favour of hitting that thumbs like... Blah, 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 blah. Say again. Anything else you want to say, babe? Well, a free and easy way to... Go on. Anything else you want to say, babe? A free and easy way to support us is to hit that subscribe button 
Put the little thumbs up if you want to. Ah, babe. Okay, this is going in the bloopers. Go. Anything else to say, babe? I'm going to say it. She's between. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you doing, my love? Oh, God, that just popped off. I can't take you anywhere, babe. What babe, are you doing? It's just. It wouldn't be meal time for me without stains, honestly.